Very good news this afternoon. The Turnbull government has said no to a plan to divide Australians by race in the Constitution. This is a plan to create in that Constitution a second kind of parliament, albeit just an advisory one, a parliament that's elected only by Australians claiming Aboriginal ancestry. Now, I don't know why this racial division should even be a possibility here, but this plan is still backed by Labor and by the government-appointed Referendum Council and by Aboriginal leaders who met in Uluru early this year. In 1967, we were counted. In 2017, we seek to be heard. But the government has now decided that an Aboriginal-only parliament is too divisive. Australians would never vote for it in a referendum anyway, and so it has said no. Joining me is the panel, Simon Breeny, Director of Policy of the Institute of Public Affairs, and Daisy Cousins, columnist and contributor to The Spectator Australia and Quadrant magazine. Daisy, um, is this a good move or a bad one? Um, I, th I think it's a good move. I think that the government has done a good thing. I'm always inherently suspicious of any kind of policy that divides people by race, however sort of well-meaning it might appear. And I think it's ironic that it's generally the left pushing these policies when they criticise the right all the time for creating racial division. I don't think it is a necessary move to create this sort of second parliament. Um, Aboriginal voices are heard. We do have Aboriginals in Parliament anyway. Their concerns are, are not ignored. And aside from anything else, it's sort of a nod to semantics. It's not going to actually address the real issues of disproportionately high levels of domestic violence and drug and alcohol abuse that exist within Aboriginal communities. So I think this is great. Bravo to Malcolm Turnbull. I'm, I'm very pleased about this. And what, so, but what, what worries me, Simon, is that Labor's still pushing it, apparently, one would assume, in the belief that it can convince Australians to vote for it in a referendum. Yeah, look, I don't think there's any, any chance of that. And I think this really is a, a wonderful decision on the part of Malcolm Turnbull and the government. Um, this is a decision which affirms democratic principles, it affirms equality of individuals under the Australian Constitution. And I, w I, I think it was a really radical... The, the people out there who are saying this is not a radical idea, I think, have got the, the whole problem completely wrong because... What it says is that in our constitution we would have enshrined racial division, we would have enshrined differences between two groups of Australians, Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. And I think, frankly, the fact that this decision um, has been made is a real win for equality. It's a real win for the idea that under the constitution we are all the same, we're individuals, we've all got rights to vote. Um, for anyone who we think should be representing us and represents our values in the parliament. And I think that that's the right way to deal with these issues. I think that the voice is your vote. Your vote is your voice and Indigenous Australians are Australians. You know, this what idea is Labor that... thinking about to give Australians different voting rights is, uh, depending on what race they belong to. This is just so insane. Well, no, no one would go for it. I mean, if, if this was put to a referendum, it would get smashed. And, and if the Labor Party think that, seriously, that they want to continue pursuing this and they really do want to put it to a referendum, along with the Republic referendum, along with, uh, you know, potential changes to Section 44, if we see some senators being knocked out, members of Parliament being knocked out uh, tomorrow, um, you know, it, th th there's this whole range of, of, of solutions that are being put forward, all of them involving constitutional change. Well, let's hope we get constitutional change exhaustion. Um, Daisy, there was a poll today uh, and it's by the Online Research Institute report in the Herald Sun showing that most Australian voters believe Australia's full, almost half, support a partial ban on Muslim immigration. But here's the thing. Not even this Liberal government seems very keen to cut our still very high levels of immigration. Here's the Immigration Minister today. In the Labor years, the number peaked at about 305,900 in one year, which was an enormous number. Uh, we've got that number down now uh, below 190,000. OK, the number's now down, Daisy, to 190,000 a year, but that is still an awful lot of people. Why do we still keep importing so many? Well, you're right, Andrew. It is an awful lot 
of people. Those poll results do not surprise me at all. We can see not just in Australia but around the world there is this shift towards ordinary people wanting to regain control of their countries and their culture. I mean, I've said it before, the two big examples are Brexit and Trump. In New Zealand last week we saw Winston Peters back um, just in Jacinda Ardern who wanted to rein in immigration. Ordinary Australians, they, they look at Europe, they see the the hordes of, of undocumented Muslim migrants coming in which have culturally completely changed the fabric of Europe and have led to ethnic enclaves. Um, they see the same thing happening in Australia to a smaller extent, for example in, in the western suburb of Sydney where we've had cases of, of polygamy and, and child marriage. They don't want that. They want, they want to regain control of their culture and their home. So I don't know why politicians don't listen to these concerns and I think over the next sort of few election cycles immigration and Western culture is going to be an increasing concern I think it's going to be a very very big concern in years to come well I think it's interesting that in New Zealand Labor Party can talk about slashing immigration Absolutely. but uh, neither party here will do that to some yeah, look, you know, we're a big country and um, as long as you've got some settings in place that allow for growth, I think that we, we shouldn't be closed-minded about it. I think having more people in Australia is a good idea. Our population... Hey. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, I think having more people means that you've got more people to provide solutions to any of the you've problems You've got more people to feed and more people well, to water sure, sure, and more people also, to put on a train and yeah, more people sure, to sure, house. Sure, and... that, all of that is true, but you've also got more people who are working, they're starting uh, uh, new businesses in Australia, you've got more people providing value to the Australian economy. Well, so The economist uh, Leith Fanonsel has done an interesting research here showing that, the, for instance, the, high, the, the state with the highest immigration in Victoria, per head of population, uh, has gone since the GFC, has in increased their wealth least. I mean, the sure, fact is you've got I mean, more people to divide sure, this extra wealth for. Well, okay, it's not great I mean, if you're not... a maker of washing machines, but yeah, not good yeah, if but you're... The pie, I mean, the, the pie's got to grow over time. And, and, OK, we can look at one state, but overall, in general, if you have a, an increase in population, and more to the point, if you allow people to move to areas where their skills are going to be they better utilised... They yes, all go to Melbourne and Sydney. Daisy? Can I, can, I, can I just say, I mean, Simon, I do, I, do, I do get what you're saying, but the thing is, look on the, for example, the, street, the streets of Sydney where I live, there has been an explosion of homeless people over the last 10 years. Like, the longer I live here, the more I walk through the seats, I see more and more people on the streets, and it is heartbreaking. I do not understand why anyone would push for taking in 190,000 people when our own citizens are starving and freezing on the street and nobody seems to be talking about. To me, that seems but grossly the point, the unfair. Point is that those Sure, sure. But the point is that what we need to do is make sure that there are opportunities for those people. We need to make it easier for people to start businesses. We need to make it easier for people to find work. Um, those are all issues that I think need to be solved not only for the migrant population but for our own population who, have, who were born here and were raised here as well. These and are issues that that's a moral hazard here. Right, but what about the here and now? What about the here and now? What are we going to do about the here I'm saying and do now? It. Let, do, it, do it now. Yeah, slush, but I wonder, slush, slush, Daisy, slush whether, slush red tape today. whether high immigration has allowed us to avoid some of these tough decisions when an employer, for instance, uh, like with chefs, you know, uh, there's a shortage of chefs. Rather than train up people in the kitchen, uh, we will import more chefs from overseas. That we are actually allowing employers to get away from training the next generation uh, and providing the jobs. They just uh, import, say, oh, look, there's a way, you know, skill shortage. Yes, I, th I think that's a really valid concern. And and you, you do see it happening. The priority of... Um, I'm going to take the nationalistic kind of Trumpism term here, I, I, I will admit, but the, the priority of every country and every government, first and foremost, should be its own citizens, housing its own citizens, training its own citizens, not importing people to do the jobs that Australians can do if we focus on them. I think that's them. right, Daisy. And I think also there's a question of national unity. I mean, we seem to be increasingly a nation of tribes. But, look, I hear your point, Simon, but mm. I'm just not convinced on the economics yet. I'd like to see better information on that. Um, Daisy Cousins, Simon Brini, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.